Hello, this is Dr. Rosie Kuhn. <clears throat> and this podcast series is called Aging Like a Guru. Who, me? Yes, you and me and everyone else. Today I want to talk about a guru named Susie who lives in New York City. And Susie's a guru like you and I kind of guru. And she's a really, really busy person. She's working in the music industry and she's very, very successful. She's working 24-7 plus a family, kids and, and uh, a hubby. <clears throat> and uh, Susie is experiencing some physical challenges that's getting kind of chronic. And... Uh, all her physicians and herbalists and chiropractors and acupuncturists can't seem to make a dent in what's happening for Susie. And so her friend referred her to me. <clears throat> and I go, well, well, what can I do? You know, I'm just, I'm just a life coach, if you will. So Susie and I talked. And um, in what I, you know, I come from a principle, as I've mentioned before, that so often our physical issues are related to stress and how we be in our life as opposed to really a truly physical um, uh, physical medical issue. So I come to, when I hear, hearing um, Susie talk, I'm hearing the potentiality for how stress is r related to what's going on for her. And I ask, like I do for each client, the first question I ask is, Susie, what do you want? What do you want from our time together, from our, our session? And sometimes I pull out my magic wand and I say, as your magic, as your fairy godmother, what is it that you would like? What do you like? And she said, I would like my health back. I want to be back in well-being and I want to be able to do the things that I'd love to do and just be free of these um, issues, these physical issues. And so I, I said, okay, great. So and and I and I said, so what's the degree to which I'm giving you the CNN version, the 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 Reader's Digest short version of this? What's the degree to to which you are currently taking care of yourself, like you're focused on having fun and being playful and being with your family in the way that's relaxing and fun? And she said, oh, about twenty percent. So I said, okay, twenty percent of your life is spent in wellness, focused or wellness as in fun and thriving and nourishing. That means 80% is in work and stress and uh, focused on getting things done. I said, if you listen to your body, what is it that your body is saying in terms of what it would like for you to be operating in? If it's not 20, what, what, where would it start to get happy? And she quieted in and she said, 30%. And there was a long pause. And I said, what's happening because this is a, a phone a phone session so I can't see it I said what's happening and she said it just feels good I feel peaceful I go great another long pause and I'm not sure what's going on so again after a pause I say how's it going what's going on for you and, and she said I'm just being in this place of peace I said okay another long pause and I said how's it going she said great I said, "How's the how's the the issue? Your indigestion, your your uh, gut doing?" And she goes, "It's quiet. I'm not experiencing the symptoms right now." I go, "Great." So, I and then the second the next question is, "What needs to shift so that you can actually have more of this?" Like your body at thirty percent says, "Yes, she's paying attention to us. She's giving us some energy. She's giving us some focus. She's attending to what we want at just ten percent more." And so I said, "What needs to shift?" And she said, "I I probably need to change my my relationship with my work. Maybe turn my phone off uh, after five o'clock or six o'clock. Maybe not work till ten o'clock at night and come home to my family." Maybe take more time to be on the beach and to, to play. And I said, okay, great. So I said, what, what do you do right now to take care of yourself? And she said, well, I go to the acupuncturist and I go to the massage therapist and I go to the chiropractor and I go, wait, 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 wait. Is that like fun for you to go to a chiro chiropractor and an acupuncturist? She goes, no, 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 no. And I go, well, what do you do for fun? And that was a different conversation. So quite often we pay people to take care of us. And in terms of chiropractor or, or um, 
acupuncture or herbalists and things like that, where we really just need to attend to ourselves in a way that we don't. We pay others to do that. We think that that's what we need to do when really we just need to have some fun. We need to uh, turn off life from in terms of what's productive, productive in terms of money and what other people expect and the obligations to others. And we just start to play, pay attention to ourselves in that place of fun. And for me, fun is actually highly productive, a highly creative space. Uh, but it's not necessarily seen that way. It's usually seen as frivolous. But the, the point of this uh, session today is that Susie has this inner guru who, once she just quieted herself, said, hey, just a little bit more time with fun, with you, doing what you love to do, that's all we want. Just a little bit more focus on on who we are inside and what lights us up and what makes us happy. But the the, the, the dilemma is, um, I'm saying this in the I in the first person, is I'm not giving up what I, I don't, I'm not going to give up what I have for what I want. And this is true for so many people, I can't tell you, <laughs> and me too, uh, that I want to hold on to what I know. This is what I call the trapeze factor in a sense when we talked earlier in a previous uh, session about, you know, you're, we're on a trapeze, a particular trapeze, and we have to let go of a trapeze one bar to get to the next bar. We don't want to let go, but we have to let go. Um, a very successful uh, entrepreneur in, in uh, another country, India, uh, he's very supportive in terms of spiritual development, but his focus is on business, business, and business. And so he's, he, he too, no matter what his theoretical position is, no matter how much he knows about a, a more expansive, open, uh, self-care uh, perspective, he still wants to hold on to his trapeze and not let go. So this is a dilemma where we, we don't want to let go of something in order to have what we really want, this big dilemma. So as we're aging like gurus, as we're aging, because uh, we're aging, uh, we, have a, we have a lot of perspectives based on consensus reality. We have a lot of perspectives based on what we learned or what our culture says. But we also know that you know, it's not a secret that 90% of our illnesses are caused by stress. And so what is stressful? Having the phone on perhaps 90% of the time um, and getting to bed much later, not having any uh, meditation time or purposeful thought time, like quieting the mind, quieting the have to, have to, have to, and just being here in the moment. Those are some of the very simple things that we already know. We know that meditation, scientifically researched, that that helps healing the body, the mind, the spirit, and brings about an integration of self. We know these things. So I always leave you with the, the possibilities of questioning what you want and what you want to do to have what you want and what, you do, <laughs> what you're not going to give up even though you want something else. So, and this is a very uh, consistent conversation with people who are sick and they end up getting cancer. They end up having to get chemo. They have, they're having to stop the work life balance that they were working or could work for and work towards. <clears throat> they have to stop all that and go to the hospital and get these chemos and get really sick. It's like, you don't, I, my point is, is we don't have to, I believe we don't have to get that sick. We can, we can, be mindful of like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm already feeling stressed. My body is already giving me messages that something has to shift, but I don't want to. And it's like, okay, great. There's some resistance. There's something there. And that's the point of where the inner guru can be really, really valuable to you to say, okay, I'm, I, I have this resistance to leave one trape trapeze bar and, and start to lean into the reaching for the next one. So we have that possibility. We have that wisdom within us to start to question, wow, I have this and I'm afraid to let go of this or I don't want to let go of this, but <clears throat> I, there's something else I want, which is health, well-being. And again, when we're aging, health is 
essential. It's fundamental. It's the, it's the bottom line of what's possible and what potential we have because we have health and well-being. That's it for today. Thank you so much for being here with me. I so appreciate your presence. If you have any questions, please let me know. Please visit my website and, uh, and leave any questions that you'd like there. All right. Bye for now. Thank you.